Hey everybody, welcome to Paranormal Beyond the Paranormal. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's pretty bad. I forget the damn name. Oh, good lord, what a week I've had already. Beyond the Paranormal with my co host. You, you can introduce Call me yourself. Rihanna. Hello. Lord of mercy, forgot her makeup, forgot her face. Well, she's all over the place right now. Anyway, uh, it's Tuesday night. We're almost close to the worst day ever at Christmas. But uh, I know some of you folks enjoy it, but I don't. Anyway, we have an awesome, awesome guest that's on the show with us tonight. Uh, he is a 17-year paranormal research veteran, author, lecturer, and hardware prototype builder, Mr. Paul Browning. I've known Paul for a good 15, 20 years now. And folks, uh, per his request, uh, we are not putting him on video this evening uh, due to um, his health and uh, that's respectful and I'm going to re uh, you know uh, do what he says <laughs> I respect what he says so without further ado hey Paul how you doing man glad to have you on the podcast man Hello. and I'm really happy to be here on a number of fronts because uh, one like you said we've known each other for a long time yeah and uh, always willing to step in and help out and um, you know, I, and, and like John was saying, you know, I apologize for not turning on video, but I know what I see is not going to be what you want to see. Uh, I've been battling terminal cancer for three years now. Um, I was given uh, two to four years and I'm doing everything I can to get as much as I can out of that and, and more if possible. But I had chemo and uh, the medication I'm on leaves me visually unappealing in my opinion, and I just don't care to uh, present that to the people that, you know, remember me for the way things used to be. But uh, I will, you know, I will come back. I'm not going away anytime soon. No, you better not. You better not give <laughs> it up. <laughs> there have been many people, man, survive this stuff. And, um, you know, when I first found out about it, 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 it broke me. Because I was like, what? No, I can't yeah. be. I don't fall for years, man. And it, it just... It doesn't matter who you are, what type of status you are, or what color your skin is. Cancer just don't care, man. It just no. It just don't care. Nope. Um. So, but uh, it's uh definitely things, and uh, it's made me get a lot of my bucket list things in order. And it, you know, all mm -hmm. these projects that I've had up in the air, I've just been knocking them out one after another to make sure I get them done, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, you've been doing a lot of stuff here lately that I've been really interested in, and we're going to talk about all this stuff. Like now, you're a prototype builder on things, and that that's in the that's in the repertoire of questions that I have here. So <laughs> we're, we're going to we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, man. I, I like these interviews because they're raw. I kind of not like to have questions wrote up, but uh, you know, hey, you got to do what you got to do. So, mm -hmm. what um, what interests you to research the paranormal? What what was that spark, man? That said. Yeah, I want to try this maybe just to see what there actually is out there. Yeah, it was. It came down to my grandfather, who uh, you know I I never knew growing up, and uh, my mother tracked him down through genealogy. And uh, when she did, we had the rare occasion to meet him once or twice. We had to drive you know halfway across the country to meet him. Um, he was more or less on his deathbed. He didn't have a whole lot of time left, and he was in really horrible shape. Uh, after visiting him once or twice, we drove home. And uh, not long after that, we got a phone call. My dad answered the phone and it was, it was his dad. And he said, look, son, I, I don't have long left. And I want to, I want to live with people that, that, you know, are my family. And, and I, I'd like to live with you. And we lived in a little podunk town in South Dakota. There was no, you know, hospice we could access. There was, the, you know, the, the, the help we needed just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, my, uh, the first time I ever see my dad cry on the phone because he knew he couldn't do anything. And, uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, he, he just had to tell him, I'm, I'm sorry, dad, I, I can't. And, uh, it was a really horrible, horrible situation, but, uh, not long after that, I'd say within a month, uh, he passed away all loose in our house. Uh, we had floor model television sets that sat on plush rug carpets swing halfway around. And, uh, that, 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 you know, those big floor models, it took two of us to move that thing around. Um, 
you know, there were, uh, there was a three drawer filing cabinet full of my mom's genealogy in it that took me, my brother and my dad, the strength to pick up and move whenever my mom just got it in her to, to relocate it. And it was turned around facing the corner that it was originally sitting in front of. We couldn't figure that one out either. Um, all this stuff happened within 24 hours of him passing. And there was, there was something else that I can't remember, but right then and there, I knew that had to have been him trying to say, look, I'm here, whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, that sparked it. That's what, that's what made me say, although I've had a passing interest growing up as a child and reading these odd stuff, uh, that cemented it for me. And especially to move those big TVs like that, just imagine yeah. the energy that this thing had. I mean, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jeez. So it was, it was nuts. Did anything else happen like that prior? I mean, to, you know, days after that, or was that the, like the last experience with him that, you know, it was your, it possibly could have been your grandpa. You know what I mean? Was there, anything else that happened? there were th- three things that, that happened. Uh, those were two of them. Oh, uh, that night uh, I got up because I was the only one in the house. We had a two story house. I was the only one that slept in the downstairs part of the house. Uh, and I remember hearing a television set, you know, the, that four model, you know, blaring. And I thought, you know, I, uh, it's kind of late, you know, who's playing the TV? Who has to have it that loud? And I got up and I had to walk around outside of my room around a bend or two to get to the entranceway that led into the living room where this television set was at. And as you approached the opening or doorway into that room, you had to go in and look to the right to see the television set. Well, I got all the way up and I could, I could just hear this thing, you know, just blaring. I got all the way up to the doorway and just started to turn my head to the right to look for the television set. And it quit just shut (laughs) off. And I don't, I don't think I touched the floor getting all the way back into my room. (laughs) I would say not. (laughs) Yeah. Go ahead, Brianna. Oh, I was just saying, if anybody's watching on Facebook live, we can get your comments and get your questions to Paul about experiences and his research and his devices. So any questions, shoot them to us and we'll get to you. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and put your comments or questions into the chat room and we'll definitely, definitely relay them to Paul. Um, I think I got to say this, man. I think I'd say 50% of people has had that experience with the TVs being either on late at night or hearing a TV that's on, that's you don't have no neighbors. And when you get to yeah. there, like you experienced it's off. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, so, some people think, well, maybe it was a remote control, but this is before the days when all televisions had remotes and that floor model sure didn't black and white TV or all color. It was color. It was a very <laughs> expensive 19 early seventies model floor model TV. I love hearing stories like that, man, because that those those are like the forefront of, of paranormal stuff, you know, back in the day. You know what I'm saying? So, right. But th- those are the days when uh, shit got really real quick because you didn't know what was going on. <laughs> what you know now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man. Going forward with that though, did um, did that peak? I know I know you said that piqued your interest, but. What did you do after that to try to learn more about what happened and could it be been paranormal related, you know? Oh, this is going to be a familiar story to so many people out there because I think there's a lot of people that are going to echo this. But I was, I remember uh, one day, you know, I'd been working at the train factory for, I don't know, a few years. And I remember, uh, you know, one night I was at home on the weekend, I think, uh, watching TV. And uh, I'm just flipping channels. And then all of a sudden I come across this one black and white channel where I think is black and white. And there's no sound, but I see these, this bald guy and somebody else there, they're just sitting there listening. And I thought, how come I don't hear anything? Is it, is it on mute? No, wait a minute. No, these, these guys are listening for something. And I realize after they're spending the next 15 minutes watching and wondering, these are plumbers that are out doing ghost hunting. And I've stumbled upon this ghost hunter show. Mm-hmm. And, and then suddenly it's like, well, this is really interesting. I like this. I think I could watch this. And after a couple of episodes, I'm like, this is all it takes. You know, I'm stupid thinking, you know, this is all it takes. You get a flashlight, you go there and, you know, you do what they do and you catch ghosts. That's all there is to it. You know, because we didn't have books that told you how to do that kind of stuff that yeah. I knew of. And it so wasn't on that's, TV like it is now. 
Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that was a big thing. We, you know, t- television had crossed the line where now we're going to show you paranormal stuff that's supposedly real, you know. And mm-hmm. so I thought, well, this this is something I could do. I have an interest in this. I want to learn. So I just started mimicking. And I shouldn't have, but I did, like everybody else usually does. But, but I refused to grow. So, I, you know, I, I graduated from all those television techniques, you know, into doing my own thing. What was your thoughts on possibly joining a team at that time or maybe just, you know, learning on your own and doing your own uh, experiments and things like that? I, uh, I originally started out with another fellow that I had met who was wanting to uh, put together a team. He had already friends he was with. They hadn't officially formed anything and they invited me to go along. So I went with them and uh, it was funny because they used to do it exactly like what they did on that television show. And I thought there's, there's more to this. I know there is, this is, this can't be, this can't be all there is. So I stayed with him for, I don't know, probably a month or two and then realized, you know what? I'm not happy with the way things are. I'm not in charge and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be the guy that says, you know, this is how we're going to do it. Cause it's not mine. So mm-hmm. I said, I'm, you know, I'm leaving. I'm going to go do my own thing. You know, I'm going to get my own team. And that's what I did. It just, it just developed from there. His team kind of faded away because his serious, his, his lack of uh, dedication or commitment wasn't the same as mine. So he kind of faded away and, and I picked it up and, and ran with it. See, that's the thing right there, man. You hit the nail on the head. Everybody's like, I want to get into this. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to do this, do this and do that. When you have been the paranormal field, man, it, it's, it's dedication. It's commitment. Um, you've got to have a yeah. passion for it. You've got to yeah. have that curiosity. You've got to have that drive to want to know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because I've told Paul this many times. I mean, this will consume you. It will absolutely consume you on what you do. And yep. people will think I'm crazy when I say that, but that it's the God's honest truth. Um, it, and it's not cut mm-hmm. out for everybody. It's and you better the, be prepared to pay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because when you, you know, bring something home, money. you're not mm-hmm. guaranteed. Well, yeah, that too. The money too. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Speaking of money and expensive um, gear, I want to talk about some of the hardware that you're building. Like everybody, I guess, that kind of has an interest in it, watches these shows and learns about, you know, the geo box and your EMS detectors and things like that. Is there something specific that you're building on right now that you feel like has something new to offer or is just super fun to play with? Paul, you still there? You really cut up bad. Oh, I'm so sorry. Can you hear now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. While you were speaking, it was like we were having some kind of a connection issue. It was really staggering and dropping out a lot of sound. Huh. I've got her good on my side. I don't know. Okay, I'll just try again. I was just asking about um, the new equipment or anything that you're building right now that um, people are kind of familiar with the geo boxes and just regular EMF detectors. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you feel like you have that's got something new to offer or is just super fun to play with? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen a lot of stuff and, and uh, I've been part of another show uh, that MVP military veterans paranormal puts together. Uh, and we're kind of brutal on there. We, we speak, uh, you know, really raw truth. And uh, it is my opinion that if you're using an, an EMF detector, you're kind of wasting mm-hmm. your time. Nobody's ever proven a single thing that an EMF detector can prove anything as a ghost because nobody, nobody's ever been able to do it. It's always been somebody who speculates or says so-and-so said, or it's been said that, but nobody can track that person down. Mm-hmm. Now for me, I take a different approach. You know, you've got the, you, you have the two basic approaches. You've got the psychic approach or metaphysical mm-hmm. approach, scientific approach. I took a different avenue altogether, which is, you know, if you, if you're familiar with the book that I wrote, I took a psychological approach. I actually get into the mind of whoever it is that I'm trying to track, find, locate, prove exist, whatever. And so Mm -hmm. what I do is I say to myself, if I died today and I'm suddenly on the other side, what came from my life? What translates? Well, obviously I ought to be able to see because I got to be able to navigate. That's one of my senses. Um, mm-hmm. I, I've got to be able to communicate. So evidently there's some way of, you know, being able to talk. Um, I've got to be able to read 
if I can use eyes to navigate. So if, wait, if I can read, great, okay. So I developed these techniques where I make these signs that I can hang on a wall that says, if you can read this, please, please and please is in big letters, because respectful. And then you give them mm -hmm. a, a, a common command, like um, turn off the light. And then mm -hmm. thank you underneath that. And I scatter these around. And ironically enough, they work. I, I had a mm -hmm. sign hanging in old South Pittsburgh hospital. Uh, the sign simply said, please open this door. So, you know, if you can read this, please open the door. Anybody who comes across it would think, well, maybe it pertains to me. And being as we don't know mm -hmm. when ghosts are around, this is irrelevant. Just put a cologne. If anything wanders up and do something, well, guess what? Record a video of the door with this sign opening and closing on several occasions. Mm -hmm. So we know that works, yep. you know, and so this is just one of several yeah. different methods that I devised that gives you a new way to look for things and new ways to communicate, new ways to get the attention of whatever's in there in a non-threatening manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul's told me that before. I mean, we talked about like logo designs, I think, before, and he's like, why do you want to go into uh, having big logos on your shirt? You know what I'm saying? And, and going in there. And I, th yeah. I think we talked about that. Uh, but uh, uh -huh. I like that, man. It's, it's exactly right. I mean, I do see some, some of the points here, but there, there's some things with EMF detectors that just blows me away a little bit, because mm -hmm. if you just ask a question, sometimes those lights light up and I'm just curious. And I'm just like, well, how does that light up? And, you know, when it, there's a question asked, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just stuff like that that kind of floors me a little bit. But I see where Paul's I don't from. understand how, like, to some of these, um, I hate to use the word, like, showy ghost hunters will be talking to these entities. And for one, it's like, if you are a sentiment person versus then you pass on and you're there spiritually, like, they don't know what these little equipment pieces are and they're a bit they'll be like if you're here make this blue light light up <laughs> like right. i don't know how they think that will be relevant because mm -hmm. <laughs> i just don't get it so some of this equipment and stuff i do get what you're saying where it can kind of be hoaxy um and definitely taken out of proportion and again i do agree with you on more of approach they're people yeah mm -hmm. unless you want to get into demonic blah 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 but um yeah so it's like i don't know how to pull up an ecstatic camera and make it map out my dotted figure like they don't they're not technologically advanced beings like yeah, especially if you're not. talking about these people from you know the 1800s and other centuries that have never seen a computer device ever in their existence and they're like mm -hmm. walk up to this blah, 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 and make these buttons flash they don't know what that means. So I don't think that's relevant. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. You that's, get it. Uh, clearly. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. device that you're talking about, they use that a lot on, on a, a, a paranormal show. And I'm not going to say it, but uh, it's just pure junk. I just, sure. I, I'm a person that is old school. If that makes sense of just recorder, paper, pen, mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know, uh, just, right. just, just casting a net out there and see what you get. I don't like all this fancy stuff. And I, and Paul, I want to ask you this. I'm sure you'll probably agree with me, but is there too much equipment out there right now that's saturated and kind of like, I guess, took all the, the fun out of the research, man, going to the old school way? I I think so. I And, and you know, when we were talking about EMF, you know how many different devices out there are based on or EMF yeah. or some kind of something that's controlled or frequency that can be tampered with uh, using the EMF is all over in the environment. So, I mean, this stuff... Yeah, this stuff, you know, oh, I that means there's a ghost. Well, how do you know the difference between a hit that comes from your environment versus a hit that comes from a two-way radio versus a CB radio, your phone or any other interference versus the ghost? Because you ask the question 20 times in a row and suddenly you got a response that you don't know where it came from, but it's a ghost. Mm -hmm. Well, I throw it out. I don't use any of that. And if I'm going to do any kind of EMF recording, use blinky lights. I hate blinky light gadgets hate them so what i did is i built yeah. machine that records emf and you can actually see the the little spiky wave pattern as it's coming through so you can tell whether or not it's a you know a man-made 
uh, signal or if it's voice signature coming through, you got to have more than just the basics, mm -hmm. you know, you, and, and so I've tried using that in the field. I, you know, I still test it because, you know, the, I, I don't know for sure if it'll ever end up working, but it's just one of those, one of those things I like playing with. Uh, so I, that's what makes me think there is no connection between EMF and a ghost. Uh, if we could figure out what a ghost is made of and everybody says energy, that's great. What kind? I think it's a heretofore undiscovered form of energy. And if we ever figure that out, then we can actually zero in on a, on a sensor that might be able to pick up what we're looking for to detect that. And until then, you know, we're just, I look at environmental variables. I use sensors of all kinds, light sensors, sound sensors, motion sensors, uh, you know, uh, magnetic sensors. Uh, what else? Uh, gosh, vibration sensors. There's so many different sensors that I incorporate and I data log a lot of stuff because I want to look for things that happen during a night that stand out that may be odd or unusual or different or, or just not make sense. They become, you know, parts of the puzzle you got to solve. Whereas mm -hmm. a lot of people just go in and they all get into their EMF sessions and they think they've they determined everything and they leave. But what do you got for it? Stories. Nobody's got anything documented. Nobody's got data. Nobody's, you know, it's all he said, she said. So, you know, I'm serious about it. I don't, I'm not a, you know, a Scooby-Doo guy. I'm not a, I don't consider myself a ghost hunter. I'm a paranormal researcher. I'm looking for answers. I'm not just going to prove whether there's a ghost. And usually mm -hmm. if I can figure out whether a place is haunted, it's going to be a place I go back to again and again and again. I don't need to try and what's there, but to develop new techniques, better ways of doing the work. I'm here to push the field. I'm not here to make a name for myself in a way that I'm, I'm on a popular television show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, a boy. you know, <laughs> do travel, like, you know, you know, people pay tickets to, you know, people on television. Well, I did that. It's no big deal. I don't care. Uh, but that's what sells tickets. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame because people could learn a better way to do you know, field tech, but they're more, you know, it's more important to them to meet Johnny, you know, so-and-so from ghost adventures or whatever. Yeah. And it's sad. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm a boring investigator and I don't care. I just, I, that's just my way you're set in your ways that you do your things. And then that's the best results that you get. Then stick with it. I've always said this, man, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I just give me a recorder and a rim pod. And I know Paul, you don't like flashy things like that, but I, I kind of like that thing because I don't get all these responses that you see on TV folks. And, and that's made for TV. They're going to have that to happen on mm -hmm. TV. Notice what I'm saying. TV. They are actors. Yeah. So, um, some of them are, are legit investigators. You know, some of these are legit researchers. Yeah. Uh, but I, I see, you know, I like taking that device and going to some locations to where you don't know if there's anything going on or not. Who knows? There's no history. I like, I like, there's the places I like to go where there's no history. I don't know anything about it. I don't want to know anything about it because I think that hypes you up more and you're focused on just that one entity, supposedly that's there. Then you're, you're mm -hmm. taking off your game to what you could actually discover, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And that just, I just, I don't know. Paul's brought me up the right way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, I will say this though. Uh, just as a caution, if you're going to use a REM pod, be careful mm -hmm. what you set it on because you can actually set them on uh, carpet and you can rub your feet about 10, 15 feet away and it'll travel off, yeah. down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful of false positives on that. I learned that the hard uh, way. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I that down. I was like, wait a second. I moved my feet this way because my foot was itching. It's going off. I was like, well, son bitch. I found out now. Some of, the, <laughs> some of the basics for what determines whether or not I'm going to use it is uh, if somebody makes a piece of hardware, I want to know what, how it was made. If it was programmed, I want to see the source because I want to know that, uh, if it's an, if it's an object that has, uh, for entertainment purposes in a manual or on the object itself, I don't want them to do with it. That was put there for a reason because they can't prove that it works. It's just meant to be entertaining. So right away, those objects go right out the door, but if they also can't be built by somebody else, and replicated and you can prove that, that you know, there's no malintent well maybe it might be something i'll use 
So you got to have the Look schematics the of that device. Yeah. I want to know all about it. I don't buy anything that's labeled ghost such and such. That uh, to me is an immediate warning yeah. sticker. Yeah. Guaranteed so. to find a ghost right now. Right, here you go. Yeah. Like those apps that they make for your phone. Oh, those are a freaking joke. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh God, Gail, I don't like ten feet by you. Oh God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Another thing that a lot of people get upset at me for, and I'm sorry, but it's how I think. Um, and I was actually shown this by another great fellow I, whose name, uh, there's a reason I can't remember at the moment. I don't know, chemo brain. Anyway, um, ghost boxes. I wanted to know a whole lot about that stuff. And he educated the crap out of me. And in short, mm -hmm. those are nothing but interpretive for entertainment purposes only type gadgets. And I just don't go near them. Uh, you mm -hmm. can interpret that stuff a million different ways by to, you know, 50 different people all at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than cloud the issues and try and, you know, get into that, I just stay away from it. You know, to me, if a ghost wants to talk to you, as, as is evidently apparent on EVPs, you don't need to muddy the water and let's do a bunch of. Yeah. Yeah. Just burying everything that could normally. Yeah. You've got all those so, frequencies coming through. You can ask one question. You've got 15 things that are, that are speaking and, and God forbid, one of those words are going to come up that you just asked for. Right. You know? and, and, or be interpreted as such. Yeah. 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 See, you know, I just think I about it. It's, it's, it's in the radio. world of Wi-Fi oh, yeah. and That's radio true. and XM streaming worldwide, I don't think that I don't care how deep in the ground you go or how back in a concrete building you are. If you've got something scanning frequencies, you're going to get something because there is so much data being transmitted constantly in the world that we live in today. You'll get something. And that does not mean that it's a ghost. It's she, like picking up a CD so and being shocked when someone answers. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> but see, gotta, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was no, just going to say, she's. It's so refreshing to hear a co-host on any radio show spout such truth, and I really appreciate that. I. <laughs> she speaks. I'm so glad that you about this stuff. So thank you. She speaks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> here's another trick, no man. Problem. No, not a trick. But here's a here's a tip for people out there that uh, conduct investigations a lot, which I don't do them anymore. Um, uh -huh. I, I hope to do it soon, but I don't want to do residential. Uh, mm -hmm. Pay to play is okay for me for a couple of places and that's it. And that's all I need. But yeah, I wanted to run this by you, Mr. Paul Browning. Um, I want mm -hmm. to try this experiment. I want to take just maybe three, four, five, six balloons, blow them up different mm -hmm. sizes mm -hmm and just hang them up somewhere and like in a row and see if they'll pop. See if I can get someone like something to enact with me and pop them and see what happens. Hmm. Well, I don't think anybody's done that yet. So that's new territory. Ah. <laughs> I mean, that's new territory. You know, why, or either like take a full balloon and just like shrink it, draw all mm -hmm. the air out of it and shrink it. Yeah. I've used a ball what? before, just like a regular children's ball, and set it in a place where I know, like, I'll test it and make sure that there's no rolling or no wind coming through to move it on its own and use that <laughs> as a way to kind of communicate. I've heard, I've done a ball before, but never a balloon. Now, in your experiment where you were using the ball, you know, and it was one of those, I call it a, a, a rolling experiment, that would be great if I had one of those signs that I had which I do when it says, if you can read this, please roll the ball. You just leave that next to the ball, set up a camera and leave it alone. Mm -hmm. no, and that way, that. I just sat with it. Well, yeah, I'm just saying for, for doing it that way, you're no longer dependent on hoping that something's in the room with you right now. It doesn't matter. You yeah. leave in later on. If it comes through, it discovers it and it does it. You know, you just leave the camera. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot of the burden off. And time. If you yeah. use no signs. I know that you had your experience when your grandfather passed away, but do you have a paranormal experience, man, that you still cannot find a realm or reason behind it, or just you can't shake to this day that you're still wanting to dive into? <laughs> I got one I don't understand, and I got another one that I I've, I originally developed as a technique that just blew about five other witnesses in the room away. 
Okay, remember now, I think uh, on a psychological level in my techniques, Gon mm-hmm. Hall, me, and five other people, I won't bring up the witnesses' names because I don't know uh, who I don't get along with anymore. And I just don't even care to credit them with anything. But anyway, Dr. Gon Hall and Billy Bird, who recently passed away, um, he had really? asked me to entertain a couple that. of, yeah. Yes, he passed away, I believe, either earlier in this month or at the end of last month. I can't remember. How old? I didn't mean to Again. interrupt you there. That just that floored me because I, I've been to Octagon Hall, and you're the reason why I got to go to Octagon Hall. Well, good yeah. Lord. Yeah. Wow. Mm. But anyway, uh, uh, I was there, and he wanted me to entertain a couple of guests because I was out there with a couple of friends, and it turned out there was total. But we were out there. It was about 11, 11.30 at night, and we We've been talking and carrying on and whatnot and experiment. And uh, they were like, okay. Cause Billy was hoping something would happen while, while these guests were there. <laughs> so I, I had everybody huddled together and I said, okay, now listen, you know, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to give you guys some instruction. I want you to try something. So everybody's all attentive and stuff. And I said, I pointed to the first person to my left. And I said, this is what I want you to do. Everybody's going to do this. Okay. But we're going to do it the way I say you, you're the first person. We're going to wait about about a minute. We're all going to be spread out in the room against the walls. I want you to make a, some kind of a noise. No talking. Nobody talks. I want you to make a noise for about five seconds. I don't care if it's rattling your keys, knocking on the wall, crinkling a bag, you know, whatever. Pick your sound, do it for five seconds, and then stop. The next person that, that's going around clockwise here, you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to make a different sound. We're all going to make different sounds. We're all going to wait, you know, a half minute you know, uh, behind the person that's in front of you. Okay. And we'll see what happens. So everybody agreed. We all spread out. The first person makes a sound. Half a minute goes by. Second, half a minute goes by. Do you know that by the time we got to the fourth person, this three and a half foot tall, someone come flying into the room and stood right in front of me. I could reach out and touch two feet away. No way. Yeah. Worked. And you know why? Because if you're in that, I'm sorry. It's just something different. If you're in a house, let's, let's put the the body back on the ghost. If you're in a house, your house, Mm -hmm. and you start hearing a noise somewhere off in the distance, and you're like, what the hell is that? And then you hear another. We're going to go check. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Human -hmm. reaction. Mm -hmm. It appeals to their baser sense. Yeah, and again, it happened. goes back to treating them like people and how like people. Yeah. So um, she, I say she, she came flying into the room, the, the Mary Elizabeth. And uh, it was amazing. Everybody was just standing there slack jawed while this thing stood about two feet away from me. So, man, okay. So that, all right. So we were there. I went and, and plus Robert went uh, and, and Amanda went with us and um, we went up to Mary Elizabeth's room, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is during the day. This is, this, this is, it wasn't even a remotely close to us even starting our investigation. Mm-hmm. So we go upstairs and, and so happens there's a family that comes in, two ladies and a, and a kid. And Billy mm-hmm. said, John, will you take these, these folks and do a... Uh, uh, a, a guide walk through and everything. I was like, yeah, sure. No problem. So I'm walking them through and we get to the, to Mary's room. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, I swear, man, we didn't have our cameras. Anything happens. We don't have cameras, anything going, <laughs> never, never fails, never fails. Mm-hmm. So we go into her room and that doll that's standing there, that's about her size. Just flipped me out. Yeah. Cause that's the first time I never saw it. Just walked in and bam, she's like, bam, right in your <laughs> face. Like, Jesus, Jesus, oh, good Lord. Mm-hmm. So anyway, we were standing there talking. We're just asking questions, nothing stupid, nothing, you know, professional, nice, talking to a little kid. We yeah. come out and I turn around and to look toward the other rooms. Cause there's two other rooms there. When you come out of hers to the left and yeah. uh, Robert said, John, look behind you. So as they were coming out, the door was shutting on its own. Oh. Not once, Paul, but twice it did it. That's so cool. And I was like, Mary Elizabeth, is that you? Are you wanting us out of your room? If so, that's fine. We'll stay out of your room. Just, you know, just let us know when that's totally fine. 
It didn't mm-hmm. shut again. It did not. It shut well, you twice. know how kids are. They get up and they like get out. Yeah. They shut that door. On you, so. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Paul, Paul can vouch for me on this. They are some mannequins in that place that will freak you out. If they don't freak you out, then I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, like the ones down in the basement with the implement room, if you are if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, my God. I had experience with that freaking door, too. I don't know what it was, but that whole night, the doors. we had The doors was a problem. Like That's I said, cool. that door upstairs shut mm-hmm. twice. Mm-hmm. We left the front door open, and we were bringing in equipment. Now, this is like at the edge of the dark at Octagon yeah. Hall. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the door that goes downstairs to the basement, so you come to the main door, you're going down. That door mm-hmm. was shut, Paul. That door had been shut all day long. So this is what happened. And I got tickled. Then I got kind of freaked out a little bit. Just because you're a paranormal researcher don't mean you're some badass. Trust me. <laughs> <'Cause you're freaked laughs> out. But uh, I was in the, the living room setting up equipment and I was bringing in equipment. So I'm the only one in there at this time. The door going up to the basement, I hear click rrr, open, and I mean this thing slammed with a force. Oh, it, that's enough to make you jump out. Oh, dude, I could have peed on myself. I'm not kidding. <laughs> when that door slammed, I heard Amanda outside in her car screaming, going, Oh, I was like, Oh, mm-hmm. shit. I was like, Oh, no, that's here crazy. we go. Here we go. I was like, She's going to get freaked out. Then I'm going to get the heebie-jeebies, and then I'm not going to be able to do this. And then I was like, oh, God. So I had to calm myself down and calm her down. And then um, we did the investigation, but it was so weird that night. The atmosphere is just so hot, and there was so much of, like, yeah. pressure on us. And I was like, something's not right in this house. But we didn't get anything. That's the, That's the thing about it. Just because you feel something and you're doing a research on it doesn't mean you're going to get in. It's, it's not like a light switch that you switch off and on. It happens when it wants mm-hmm. to happen. And Right. But, you know, it's cool that you have those personal experiences. And sure. uh, those three things, man, still makes me want to go back to Octagon Hall again. Um, didn't get yeah. anything at the graveyard. Didn't get anything at that. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's still a cool place. But the only bad thing about it is, folks, it's real close to the highway. So you're going to have to, like, really. Go the sound. Yes, really. And that yeah. sucks we lost Billy because I did not know that. Did not know that. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. A lot. Of, I think there's a lot of people that aren't really um, talking a whole lot about it. Because when I found out about it, I found out, but, uh, I want to say, the day it's just one of those things. I, I mean, it just, it just, I didn't know what to think. And I mean, for all the friends that I, everybody who I'd ever talked to about the Octagon Hall that knows Billy and you know what I mean? But yeah. I mean, he's, he's connected to a lot of people anyway. So. Oh yeah. And I hope they keep it open, man. I hope they still keep it. I believe it they are. Good. I believe they are. That's good. But, I, um, I'm, I'm glad that uh, TV finally picked it up. And I know a lot of people don't like the paranormal shows, but I'm glad that they, had enough respect for it to go in and do it because um, Octagon Hall is a special, special place that does not need to be forgotten about our Civil War. So right. that's a huge, huge place. Octagon Hall, yeah. folks, I heard of it. Go check it out. Um, it was the first place I ever investigated that I had that was legitimately haunted. See, you've had right. this. See, there you go. You caught stuff, and I don't think we caught anything, which, again, that's cool no. because it doesn't happen on – Every I mean, time. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, you, wouldn't you get bored though? Paul, let me ask you guys this. Wouldn't you get bored if, if you were a paranormal researcher and you went back to a place 50 times and every time you go back there, you catch you all this evidence. stuff? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it, wouldn't it like burn you out? It, it should. I mean, because the, the newness is gone, the discovery, you know, unless you find ways to keep it refreshing, I just don't see it lasting very long at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the last times that I investigated out there, uh, there was a guy that was going to film something. I'd come out there and we were filming a segment for something, video recording going and whatever was in the house actually called me by name. But the guy that was with us and I, that was filming talked over top of him because this, whatever this person uh-huh. was, that was out there. He said, uh, well, Paul, and then just like that. He, the, the cameraman obviously didn't hear the voice talked right over it. I could have, you know, this thing was addressing me by name. Yeah. Name. I, I've been waiting. 
Because you can develop a relationship, believe it or not, between you and something that's hanging out at a location. You know, if you go there long enough and they trust you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that for sure. So. And if you can pit up with the, with the pig crap smell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would say that. I would say that. Um, yeah. So, so what, what's been your most memorable investigation or location that, that you've been to, or maybe what's on your bucket list that you'd like to go to eventually, if you can? Um, well, honestly, I think my, my focus has been on, uh, or my, uh, my, what I want to refocus on, cause it's been a while since I've been out there. It's under new man. Uh, Ronnie D runs the old South Pittsburgh hospital and that place has always got stuff going on in there. And I talked to him about, uh, building some gear that, you know, he can keep out there for other teams to use. And I told him, I said, I'm, I, I built a lot of prototype hardware and I used to go out there for years testing this stuff. And I'd like to be able to continue doing that. And he, he said it was going to work. You know, Old South Pittsburgh, I never can say that right. I always get tongue tied. Old South Pittsburgh Hospital, uh, yes. for me, lived up to everything that you told me. Um, yeah. And I think you was, was you there with us that night or couldn't make it or something? Other? Maybe? I'm not sure. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm, I've, I've been to so many. Um, when we did the. But I will walk- say. Go ahead. No, yeah, no, you know, you go ahead before you forget. You were doing a walkthrough? Yeah, we were doing the walkthrough. And so up by the surgical rooms, right? Okay. Yeah. So we didn't go left. We made like a circle around to the surgical rooms where we went to the nursery. And it, yeah. it, this place is insane, folks. You've got a third floor that has surgical rooms, a nursery, and plus you had like a mental ward Psych all ward. in one. Yeah. yeah. All in one. And so crazy, so creepy. But... <laughs> This is what sold me, and and after after this this walkthrough just floored me. We go around, we get to the last uh, surgical room. Mm-hmm. As I turn and look to the left, back down to the hall where you see the elevator. I guess like I think it's an elevator. Um, yeah, I see like a like somebody walk by. I caught the last little bit of the leg going by. Gray pants, mm-hmm. black shoes, and a white like a doctor's coat. Yeah, and I said. Oh shit. <laughs> That's the first time that I had ever, ever caught a full glimpse of a apparition. Yeah. That's uh, those are such awesome experiences. Yes. Mm-hmm. Again, no camera. Always. Yep. Never. Always. 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 But That's that why you keep doing it though. That's what oh, kind yeah. of keeps you pushing to keep doing it and try to catch it yeah but like because well, even if you know even if you remember part of it is you want everyone else to know too yeah this place is this place is beautiful inside and out i mean it, it's absolutely for a paranormal researcher <clears throat> this is like your college where you need to go to because it, it will challenge you and it will sure yeah. push you to your limits of whether you want to do this or not mm-hmm. trust me yeah and it uh, is it is the ultimate yes yes it is well we had a paul let me tell you this before i forget and i'm sorry folks yeah. but uh, there was a we caught an evp of a kid making a pig sound so, <laughs> i remember you telling me that yeah yeah i guess it's because i'm a big guy and she it, was, it sounded like a girl calling me a pig i guess i don't know but it was it was funnier than hell because <laughs> you got to be kidding me really i remember I, that I I go back through and listen to some of those EVPs that we got from from remote South Pittsburgh Hospital, and they uh, they floor me. They floor me. Um, I I was going to say before I okay, go ahead. Forget sure. I have a hypothesis. I hate saying theory because I'm skipping. You know, mm-hmm. a hypothesis that I think, like uh, you're both saying, you know, it's you can't catch this stuff on. You know, you never have a camera with you. I think that honestly, as long as they're around you, they're not going to perform. And if yourself from the situation, they'll do things without thinking because they're always on guard around you. You know, so if the camera is in some other place mm-hmm. where you're not and say you're gone, which is why we were able to capture video of uh, somebody opening that door with that sign. 
I think they're there. So there was nobody for them to worry about. They just went ahead and did whatever. Mm-hmm. Just a thought. Yeah. Rihanna, Rihanna, if you got anything Again, to say, it is, on in here. Yeah. It is kind of just like, uh, if I agree with you on or approaching it with uh, accurate psychology, um, mm-hmm. if you watch living children in their natural habitat and they're sitting and playing and playing with their toys and you walk into the room with a camera, they do chill out and right. just like try not to look at you. And again, you got to, it's not like you're trying to find some Bigfoot or something like that. If you're talking about ghost actual hunting, it's just people. So yeah. they would just be walking around doing whatever. Like they're not going to be worried about you. Mm-hmm. Like they're not going to mm-hmm. be like, oh, let me stop and smile for a picture of big cheese, you know? So right. makes me nervous when I see a camera around me. Yeah. Everybody ducks and hides from that in first reaction. <laughs> so they're going to do that as well. I would love yeah. to go back to South Pittsburgh Hospital, honestly. I want to go. I, I've got yeah. three places where I call my redemption uh, researches. One, one is Waverly because I went to Waverly. And I honestly yeah. could have slept the whole night on the third floor, first floor, second yeah, floor. I love Waverly. Really. I, I had yeah. no experiences other than I smelt the bread on the uh, uh, what was it, second, third floor, something like that, where the cafeteria is at. at that, that's all I did. That, that was it. Nothing else my happened. Most, my most hmm. active time, I think what promoted it being my most active time was we were on the children's floor and I had children with me i had my daughter and a couple of her friends Mm. um Mm -hmm. and i think they just wanted to play and it was a situation like they had a ball in the middle of the floor and like the flashlights kept going off and it's like when it went off one time the ball was across the room and when the light came on it was in front of one of the little boys and it was like they kept (sighs) going and like turning around and like did you touch my head did you do (laughs) that and it was like it was if it was children their age at their height, they would have been like tapping, Hey, come play, hey, come play. You know, it was just like right. That's kind of more what I felt it was. Like it was no malevolent, malicious, nothing. It was just these kids I saw other kids and they wanted to play with them. Yeah. Right. So, right. Oh, Paul, yeah. let me tell you this too about oh South Pittsburgh Hospital that night that we were there. Uh mm-hmm. later on that night during the investigation, about about two about two o'clock, two thirty in the morning, uh I think it was Daniel Amy Taylor that was with us. Maybe he saw a uh, apparition go through the the wall into another room. Um, it was across from the old lady's room on the third floor. Oh yeah. 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 Down at the end of the hall. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. When you turn right, go down to the end of the main, uh, end of the yeah. hall. They put roses in the lady's room, flowers, stuff like that. Right. It's a, it's a room across from there. Now in her room, there was nothing that happened. It was a heavy feeling, but there was nothing that there was nothing that happened. But now the yeah. other room adjacent to that man, mm-hmm. it seemed like it was off the wall because, you know, they were up there and I could hear them. Something was going on. So I take off and go upstairs. And that's when they were telling me, man, there's something going in between these walls and it's going right through these walls. It's a dark figure. So huh. they, didn't, they said it was about six feet, seven feet tall. So I uh, believe it has been reported several times so see there you go i'm telling you folks um a bit of information mm-hmm. go, no, ahead. Just, go ahead man <laughs> it's, you're right. okay uh uh when it came to investigate the old south Pittsburgh hospital i was actually in the second group ever to step foot in that place and do do some of that work uh, i would have been in the first group i got stuck having to work i couldn't get out of it so i went in with the second group and made and the level of stuff that was first time was just unreal. Uh, but I have been in OSPH for years. I mean, I, I walk around in the dark. I still do it with other groups. I'll walk around in the dark. I don't have a flat. Way. I, you know, I've already mapped everything out in there. Mm-hmm. But cleaned out place that now the first floor is 100% available. You run all over in there. And it was like, coming out to visit the first time again for me because I had to relearn new stuff in the hospital that I'd spent years in. You know, you go down the bottom floor and explore all of it now. And it's, it's so amazing because now you have access to so much more. And, uh, you know, if you get a chance and you go back out, it's going to be like going into a 
a completely different building. It's available. Did you find that you had more success with it all cleaned out without all the clutterness, or did you think the clutterness helped it more? I don't think it affected anything. I think, it, mm. you know, I had set up a, at a base station, which is uh, not too far from the nurse's station where they were keeping snacks and things when the previous uh, operators were handling that building. Um, and it's funny because I kept hearing somebody walk walking back and forth outside and take a flashlight, stood out in the hallway waiting, and I could hear the foot falls but nobody was there oh wow i i think it's like i said it's there's times where not not much activity happens it's just crazy mm-hmm. and it's just you know did you pick the right day <laughs> it's not guaranteed mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah for sure folks if you have any questions for mr paul browning please put them in the chat room also rihanna uh has her page up please put the questions in there we'll ask paul uh, for sure, because he does not mind to answer your questions about all paranormal things, because that is what uh, we are here for. We are here to help and shine some light on paranormal and things like that, because everything's not demonic. Everything's not mean. Everything's not evil. Uh, <laughs> you know, just cause yeah. somebody parts and wind don't mean it's evil, too. It just freaks, you know. That's right. But, uh, <laughs> do you think, man, people are more open now? about their experiences with the paranormal or do you feel people still watch what they have to say about it? I, I think we're a lot more open. I know the younger generation, I think my, you know, Gen Mm -hmm. X all the way down, I think uh, we're more conditioned to be able to talk about this stuff. Whereas, uh, you know, the baby boomers and all those people above, they were, they weren't exactly open about that because people laughed about stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I still see mm-hmm. them kind of looking like they're going to think I'm old and nuts about talking about this stuff. I don't know if I still want to share, but, uh, you know, for my generation and, and below, it doesn't seem to be an issue. Mm-hmm. It's very Rihanna. mainstream now. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Every time you look around on, on certain channels it's it's all over the place which i'm cool with that because i watch it sometimes just to see just mm-hmm. to see things just just because of location facts that that's my deal. Right. these locations um but uh yeah it's like it's it's an ever repeating thing it's like we've said before it's not like a light switch that you turn off and on so remind remember folks it's a tv show <laughs> it's a tv exactly. show <laughs> rihanna <laughs> do you have they call it yeah Exactly. Do you have any questions for him, Rihanna, about his prototypes and stuff like that? Like what he's working on new for that stuff? Oh, she had, she had asked me some of the stuff I've been working on. I never right. got around to saying that. Right. <laughs> um, most of the things that I build are, are sensor related. And uh, one of the, the latest ones that I built, uh, it's called a bipad. Uh, normally I throw my name in front of it so people at least have an idea who put it together. Uh, but yeah. uh, B-I-P-A-D, yeah. the I-P-A-D stands for Interactive Paranormal Effect Detector. And what it is, is a gadget with uh, uh, several sensors that uh, are set up to test whether or not uh, if there's anything in the room mm-hmm. that reads the sign that attached to it says, if you can read this, please place your fingers in the holes. Mm-hmm. And this gadget, which mm-hmm. I sent a picture of to to you, John, you, you'll know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. Uh if you put your fingers in the holes, you'll set off those uh, different types of sensors depending on which one you hit. I've got a, I've got a, a capacitive sensor, which is kind of like your phone, you know, where you touch a screen and it does something. So I thought, mm-hmm. I wonder if they put their fingers in there, if they're made of some kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say energy, I hate that, but if they have, a, if they're able to affect that sensor and make it go off, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we've got a key to something here. Uh, I also have a light sensor. So if they put their finger in the hole, they may not even have to touch it. It may block, you know, they turned off the light. So that, that one was affected. I've got a third sensor. And so if for some reason, when they touch it, if they are a temperature, that's at least five degrees different than whatever's in the room, it'll, it'll trigger. Uh, And I've also got a a hall sensor. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, yes, wow. all in this one box. Cool. And so the last sensor is a hall sensor, which picks up EMF or rather magnetism. So mm-hmm. if, if, if for some reason, here we go, EMF, uh, if these things can affect EMF or magnetics, if they're made of something that, if, that, that affects a magnet, well, then that'll trigger. Now, we can't, can't do that one. I can put my, maybe they can. I don't know. Who knows? I'm just guessing. 
So it's an experiment. But the thing is, if they can affect this stuff, depending on which one they touch, I've got an LED above each one so that I can look in there. And if I've got a green LED popped up, it's very possible that I could have possibly had some activity take place. Mm -hmm. And think mm -hmm. about this concept for a minute. If even on, and let's say it happens sometimes because one time is not going to be enough for me. Let's say, mm -hmm. okay, so I reset it and I put it up in a different area. It happens again and it happens again and it happens again. And I'm still moving it around. I'm still making sure no one go, you know, goes in there. Um, then imagine what we do at this point. Now we're going to take that sensor and I'm going to put it in a new box. And I'm going to put two holes. One of them's going to be labeled yes and one of them's labeled no. Now maybe if I can convince something that may be in the room with me to answer a question, now I might get direct answers to questions. Now mm -hmm. that's the next level. So now we've got a yes, no answer. Okay. Now let's take it another step. Now let's say being as we know that that particular sensor can be affected, that I put an entire keyboard out with that sensor 26 times and they're able to affect it so they can touch holes with letters above them. And it's like literally texting from the dead. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's absolutely awesome. Yeah, so that's a level and of it communication. Can be so accurate. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, so that's that's kind of what the project's working towards. So, so this spring we need to go back to Old South Pittsburgh Hospital and do a bunch of testing and see what we get. That would be fun. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. So, because you're not leaving me yet, damn it, you're going with us. <laughs> I want to go. You know you're going. So. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so out of the out of the 17 years, man, and all these people that you've helped, what have you taken away from all mm -hmm. your years of research in the paranormal field? Have they been positive, more positives, or more negatives? Well, it depends on the aspects. I mean, in the field in general, I always love doing the work. I've always mm -hmm. loved trying to learn things to make some kind of discovery or some kind of something that'll help. So that when I do leave, peep famous, but just to know that I, I did something to know that, that, mm -hmm. that, uh, I left some, you know, that, that I'm responsible for, uh, you know, you know, understanding something that a lot of us didn't, that would just make me feel good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you sure so, have one paranormal investigator, right? That, that's for sure. So, you know, when everybody else was telling me no, or didn't give me time of day, you, you, you didn't turn me away. So, and then there's several no. that helped me. So I appreciate it. Sure. Not a problem. And then that could get down, you know, if, when we go, if, if we get to go and this all works out, I could try out my balloon test that I want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be so, cool. You know, we'll try, yeah. we'll try a bunch of stuff. I've got some more stuff I want to test in there too. So there's some, there's some other stuff we can. Now you're writing, uh, you're, you're working on another book and I do have the, the actual book right here because I did download this one. Thinking outside yeah. the box tips, tricks, and tactics for the Paranormal Investigator 2020 edition by Mr. Paul Browning. Let's talk yes. about this, man. Uh, why did you want to update this? Just just for just for your prototypes or just what you've uh, encountered now for the last couple of years? Well, it's it's a combination of a couple of different reasons. Mostly, I wanted to make sure that I you know, I got all, all the methods in that I think people need to be using, uh, you know, and so since the previous edition, there's several things that I've discovered, several things that I think people should be doing. And also I wanted to get it done before I passed away that everything that, you know, all my, I don't want to call them tricks, but all my doing the work uh, to try and outthink whatever it is that you're trying to prove exists or not um, was at your, you know, your arsenal of uh, whatever it is you want to do on a location. So, yeah, I wanted to make sure it was out there. You know, if I don't make it, I hope that copies of this will st still be around so they can, you know. So, they yeah, once you uh, publish this and put this out, man, I want a link because I want to buy it. I keep all that stuff on It's hand. out. Just so it's that way I can, I can dive into the tips and trips of my bag. You know what I mean? So, sure. Uh, Thank you. Dover Paratech, hello all, hello Dover Paratech, how are you? Hope you're enjoying your Tuesday. 
and enjoying the podcast. So if you have any questions for Mr. Paul Browning, we're going to be in here for just a couple more minutes. Okay. Wow. Right off the bat. Way to go, Dover Tech, Paratech. Uh, go ahead and read it, Rihanna. I'll let you take it away. Um. Okay. Serious question. How can you build a device to detect the paranormal when you have to... When you have to have a complete understanding what the paranormal consists of in the first place. Well, like anything else, you've got to be able to start peeling uh, the the skin off the onion. I mean, we don't know what it is, but if it's something that reacts psychologically to something, I think that clues will prove that it's not something that's just randomly happening, that there's actually Mm -hmm. some kind of consciousness Mm -hmm. reacting to something that you set up, which I think I've actually accomplished in in a couple of different examples, including luring, which I didn't know was something that could be done to bring something to come look for you and save you the trouble of looking for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I always like, that's to, why uh, go ahead. I was going to say, that's why uh, I, I approach the work the way I do because of the very thing that you asked me, because that's the, how do you define something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always like asking the question when I'm doing my EVPs, uh, EVP questions are like, Hey, if you can see me, do you have a question you want to ask me? You know, mm-hmm. is there something yeah. about me that, that you want to know uh, why I'm dressed this way, what my shirt? So, you know, it's just stuff like that because you don't know who you're dealing with. You could be talking to somebody that just passed yeah. away two weeks ago or somebody that died, you know, 45 years ago. Who knows? Right. So you, you're always right. like, oh, yeah. And like, so, yeah. you're always thinking outside that box. Oh, you're fine. And it, 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 you're do- always thinking outside that box. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, Anytime you do an EVP session, you should never be asking questions. That's the wrong way to do it. I don't care what anybody says. It's wrong. What you need to do is research who may be there. And if you find out who they are, figure out what they were into, find out what they all that stuff. Then you get about two or three of your little cohorts. You get together and you, you get, you pick a room where you think they might be hanging out or you know any random room. You start talking about those things. You don't invite them in. To, to join, they'll do that naturally. You won't have to worry. They'll yeah. they'll love the, the topics and they'll join in. It happens. Yeah. Again, it's just you like know? making friends, treating them like people coming at it with a psychological approach. If you were trying to um, find a person and get them to talk to you and draw them out, that's what we got to kind of look at here. You're not trying to, um, look for a ghost and communicate with a ghost you have to remember the whole definition of a ghost would be a person who had passed on so if look at it how you would contact a person you have to treat them like people or they will be disrespected and you're probably not going to get any evidence mm-hmm. yep denver Parat- if you, if you had a, oh, i'm sorry I was just going to say, just, you know, when, when you're, uh, when you're talking about stuff that they're interested in, the idea is that you, it's not, you know, oh my gosh, I've been put on the spot. They're asking me questions. Uh, 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 I don't want to talk to you people. And they run. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So you turn it, it's, you turn it around you just make it to where, you know, they're comfortable and hey, maybe they'll add a comment and it happens. So anyway. Den- uh, Dover Paratech says the key to EVPs is to discover the frequencies. I believe sometimes they are electronic. Or, or, I'm sorry. Electromagnetic in yeah, nature. Electromagnetic. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, once you know that, then you can have a two-way c- communication. Um, that's true in some forms. Uh, but I-, I never use headphones when I do those EVPs, man. I just, I'm just sitting there asking away. I just, uh, I'm kind of, that's just how I do it. That's just how I do it. I'm kind of curious for, uh, for someone who says that, uh, you know, you use, uh, you figure out the frequency. Has anyone done that yet? I mean, it, what's the magic mm-hmm. frequency? I mean, as far as I know, figuring out the frequency, you're going to need uh, some really, really expensive gear just to figure out the frequency. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking hundreds of dollars, maybe even higher. Even the most you know, so. um, advanced equipment now is sweeping multiple, multiple, multiple frequencies um, Mm -hmm. at an unreal speed. So if there was one frequency, I believe that these equipment that these people are paying hundreds of dollars for probably wouldn't need to sweep um, like hundreds of frequencies per minute. So we would know it. You need a spectrum analyzer. Spectrum analyzers, yeah, they run up in the thousands. Well, that's just so what Dover that's Paratech what just, just replied. Yeah. I'm looking for, I'm looking using a spectrum 
analyzer. I think he means yeah, I'm looking at using a spectrum yeah. analyzer. There you go. I'd Thank love you. to hear more about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get you back on here, man, and, and uh, Dover Paratech. If you get one and you do some research on this, and and from you know from your experiences, and next time we have Mr. Let's Paul, see what you find. Come here, yeah, yeah, come back down here and let us know because that's uh, interesting. Um, yeah. Any, anything that people can can dab to the uh, paranormal and research and everything, man, more power to you. You know, mm -hmm. um, but do it in the right way. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so, let's see. Trying to get a. Trying to, why, trying to get correlation. I'm trying between, to get correlation between EVPs in a vacuum and the analyzer. Well, good. I, you know, I'm glad somebody's working on that problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Way to go, Dover Paratech. Absolutely. Very good. Very well, very good. I, I definitely wouldn't discourage somebody who's, who's who's that serious and has that kind of drive and is yeah. already saying things that make sense to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Keep going, Dover. Keep going for sure. That is for sure because, you know, more research you can help out with, hey, more power to you, more power to you. That's right. Just, mm -hmm. just like you and Paul, I mean, you guys may find some type of new tool that, that will help out the paranormal field. Um, mm -hmm. but, you know, and advance it further, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For Absolutely. Sure. Folks, we are going to get off here because Paul's had a – uh, hell of a day so out of respect we're gonna let him go let him rest and recuperate uh brother you're always welcome on here anytime whatsoever i don't care um you know that thank you so, so much it was so yeah. great to um digitally meet you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well we're gonna we're gonna do it better if we get a chance to go at osph or if if i get another show and uh and, and i'm not uh quite as beat up by this medication you know you'll uh, uh you'll be able to see what i look like nowadays yeah, and when we get to OSPH, man, you can, um, whoever I bring, you can uh, educate us on some things. Sure. I, I, like to see, I like to see things uh, with my own eyes. You know what I mean? I have like a hands-on thing with them, so that's what I want to sure. do. Sure. Cool. Folks, I want to thank each and every single person who has came in here to listen and to uh, give your thoughts and everything. Thank you, Dover Paratech, for coming in here as well. Sorry that we have to cut this uh, already because you just came here maybe five minutes ago. But uh, mm -hmm. like I said, Paul has had uh, chemo today, and uh, we want to let him recuperate and get uh, to his meds and everything like that. So he needs them. You can go find us on YouTube. Look up the Paranormal Pot Beyond. Well, Lord of Mercy, Beyond Paranormal. Beyond the Paranormal. See, she has helped me out so much this evening. Good Lord, I'm all over the place. Like, hey. And I was worried about stuttering earlier, John. Yeah, see, and I didn't do my makeup like she did yesterday. That's what <laughs> happened. That's exactly what happened. Beyond the Paranormal podcast on YouTube. Uh, we don't have a Facebook page as of yet, but we do have a new logo, and I will show you the logo right now. I dig it. I really do dig it. If I, well, if I can find a stupid thing. There it is. That is our new logo. Love. That is it. Rock. Thank you, Ryan Beavers, for doing that. He made that like in no time. So, and I'm very happy with that. Look, it's brown as Bigfoot right there. Look at it. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> but anyway, please, please go and subscribe to our YouTube page. And uh, next Tuesday, as always, we'll have another guest on here. And then uh, next Tuesday is going to be a really, really good one as well. So, thank you all. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Have a good Christmas. I hate Christmas, but. Uh, <laughs> all that good stuff. Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Am I leaving anything out here? Um, mistletoe. Festivus. Oh, yeah. Festivus. Thanks. Um, and solstice. That's today. Winter solstice. <laughs> right. I should have had I know, like honey, a... honey, but pagans be like, oh, you know. I should have had like a, like a headband with mistletoe on it hanging off my head, bouncing. That'd have yeah. been cool. That'd have been really cool. But anyway, thanks, folks, for being in here. I truly appreciate it. Paul, man. Got you in my prayers and uh, wish you everything in the world, man. Keep you around here longer. Thank you. See you, folks. Best wishes, dear. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.